Welcome back. You're watching Live from Paris on France Van Catholic. It's time now for tonight's Media Watch. James Queen is here. Good evening, Laura. And James, we don't need to, to, to look very far. Just look at the newsstands today. All of the newspapers and the magazines really laying into President Sarkozy. It's not good, I reckon it? Sarkozy wasn't going down to his local newsstand this morning because he, he'd got a bit of a shock. Well, he was in Morocco anyway, so, you know, he wouldn't have been there. <laughs> but uh, let's just have a look at some of them. You've got La Chute du Clan. Uh, you had Liberation as well, which had a similar headline this morning. That's a left-leaning newspaper. That's the fall of the clan, for those That's that don't know. That's right. Right. I should, yes, I should remember that. <laughs> Les coulisses uh, d'une fin de règne. That's uh, the kind of corridors or behind the scenes of... The of end an, of a reign. The end of a reign, exactly. And you also had Le Point with something very similar. Fin de règne, l'express, uh, libération. So basically four major titles saying this is the end of the line. It's over. Because the thing is, there, ha there have been just one, there has been one scandal after the other mounting up on Sarkozy. Uh, scandals relating to graft and illegal political funding. Scandals relating to uh, illegal wiretapping of journalists. And while none of them have directly implicated the, the president for now, uh, although there are, there are whisperings uh, that uh, there, are, there is proof here, hi hither and thither, uh, a lot of the people around him, such as Brice Ofte Feu, his former interior minister, and his right-hand man, really, the man in charge of getting him re-elected, have been directly implicated in these uh, in some of these scandals so it's it's really pretty serious and indeed Laurent Joffrin who is uh, an editorial writer for this magazine he has said that as far as anyone can now tell Sarkozy cannot win the election and, next and are May. these anti-Sarkozy publications in general or is no Le Point is, is a right-leaning publication uh, Le Nouvel Observateur and L'Express are seen as pretty pretty fair Le Nouvel Observateur is a bit more left-leaning Liberation is very left-leaning but you know it's across the board and even insiders are now saying according to one well-placed journalist here who knows somebody very close to the Sarkozy circle power this is not retrievable anymore. So that's that's what people are saying. Now, the thing is, Sarkozy seems to think that uh, this campaign will centre on the crisis. We don't know what's going to happen in the next five, six, seven months in terms of the global economy. And we don't know then perhaps how electors will, will choose to vote on that basis. So I suppose it is a little bit early to be saying that. A quick look at a cartoon as well. This is in Le Monde, uh, Mr. Plantu, uh, showing Sarkozy falling through a trap door with all sorts of bags of cash underneath. And, uh, <laughs> Karachi uh, and on one of those bags. That's and the right. 1995 campaign when he was alleged to have received money from uh, the L'Oreal heiress Lillian Betancourt, right? There you go. And the One of the biggest scandals to hit his presidency. And the little crown toppling off his head. So that's Sarkozy. Uh, <laughs> now he, as you <laughs> said, he's, well. he's in Morocco at the moment, isn't he? That's right. And very briefly, uh, there's a bit of a scandal there too. He's not getting any respite over across the Mediterranean Sea. You've got bloggers here. You can see uh, un TGV ne fait pas le printemps. Now to explain that, there's a TGV deal, that's the, the high-speed train in France, between uh, France and Morocco for two to three billion euros. Now, a lot of bloggers are saying this deal was signed because Morocco reneged on a previous deal in 2007 to buy fighter jets. They went to the States instead and bought their F-16s instead of buying France's Rafale fighters. So there is a lot of speculation that this was just to kind of keep the French on side. Uh, many other bloggers and journalists, including this one for Afrique.com, are saying, look, this is a country with one third of the population who are illiterate. There are serious problems in Morocco that should be dealt with before buying high-speed train lines, which the vast majority of the population won't be able to afford. Or perhaps buy a ticket, they won't know where they're going. Exactly. There uh, you go. <laughs> anyway, um, it's hard to believe, isn't it? But uh, 30 years ago, France was still executing criminals. I mean, I was alive. I don't know if you were. I was almost alive. <laughs> <laughs> I was a zygote. Uh, well, I'm not even sure if I was. Anyway, uh, back to the main point. Uh, 30 years ago, it'll be 30 years ago tomorrow. And uh, this is interesting, I suppose, after the whole Troy Davis scandal uh, in, in, um, in Georgia last week. Le Figaro has an article about... Uh, people who actually remember the death penalty in France. Now, you have various lawyers who remember those cold, chilly mornings in, in prison courtyards and the screams of people, you know, who basically whose fate was sealed. There's also an article, very interestingly, about this guy. Now, his name is Philippe Maurice, like the cigarette company, but not the cigarette company. <laughs> now, he was the very last person in France to be sentenced to death. Now, this was in 1981. Incredible. And in May 1981, the thing is, shortly afterwards, Mitterrand and the left came into power and and he was given, uh, he was uh, gracier, as they say in French, he was given pardon. presidential pardon. And so there you go. It's a very interesting story. And it, it, he, he, he was then given a life sentence, but he's now out of prison. Uh, he used that time to get a doctorate and become a specialist in medieval history. But the thing is, I suppose he's part of history himself now. But I find it uh, really stunning that it was only in 1981 that the death penalty was done away with in a country that I suppose has a symbol. Right. In Britain, it was in uh, the 1950s, wasn't it? Because I it think it was much more previous to 1981. And do you know how they did it? 
It was still the guillotine right up until right the seventies. Right up 70s. until nineteen eighty. Right? It wasn't the last time the guillotine was actually used was in seventy two, I believe. But yeah, heads were, heads were rolling in prison Literally courts up to the nineteen seventies. Goodness yeah. me! All right, now uh, talking of heads and brains, yes, uh, you've got a bit of a scientific discovery for us. That's right. Now this is in Le Point. Quand nos rêves seront filmés, when our dreams will be filmed. Oh, now this scary is scary stuff. It is a bit scary. It is a little <laughs> bit Orwellian. Now this is from the University of Berkeley over in California, and the American press were talking about this a couple of days ago now the French press is all agog about it basically uh, they've developed a scanner which can reproduce images uh, as perceived by the brain so what they did is they got some people to sit down and watch a movie and then they were able to measure the blood flow from the visual cortex of the brain of visual cortex. you can see it here actually and uh, the reality uh, being on the right the, uh, the on the left rather and the reconstru reconstru reconstructed ah. image on the right it's actually pretty impressive now it, it, it can make it can pick out the form, it can pick out the kind of colour, the general shape. Uh, no, it's not. It's a bit of a Turner or a sort of a Monet, isn't it? It's a bit kind of impressionist in terms yeah. of the brush strokes. But, you know, it, it shows, uh, uh, you know, the way things are going, basically. So it could be used for people who have communication difficulties to tell what they're thinking. And, yeah, I was going to make a joke about how I'd used it on your brain earlier, and I was absolutely appalled at what, what I saw. There. <laughs> well, not even that. I was just appalled at what... <laughs> Yeah. Right. Those awful thoughts you were having. Anyway, uh, speaking of, <laughs> there's a cat. Will we finish with cat? Yes, yeah, disturbing picture. This, of cat. Is, this is not this. very serious at all. I probably shouldn't be doing this, but anyway, it's a cat, <laughs> and they have it on this uh, French website called Jeanne Seed. You and, find but, all the best stuff. It's you. also in the sun. Oh, it's a cat with two heads, right? No. And the thing they, they call three it a eyes. Janus cat, three eyes. <gasps> Uh, exactly, and in fact, uh, this Janus cat is it has survived to twelve years of age, which is almost unheard of. So you can oh, see various other pictures there. And his it's name, like a Siam Siamese twins cat. It's it's exactly it's exactly that. And the thing is, the owner was explaining that he's quite fluffy. He's got lovely white fluffy kind of fur. And the people come up trying oh. to stroke him, and then he turns his head around, and they get an awful shock. And oh, he has two sad. names. He has two yeah. names: Frank and Lou. And then they make a joke because it's Frank and Lou. See, oh, yeah, Frankenstein, see Frank and Lou, all of that. Aww. But uh, so one face is Frank and the other face is uh, Lou. And he's 12 years twice. old. 12 years old. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Frank, Frank and Lou. All right, lovely. <laughs> James Creedon, as thanks. always, many thanks indeed. That's it for Media Watch. We'll be back with the headlines in a moment. But first, let's take a look at what's making buzz on the internet with web news.